Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and today I'm going to present to you the only spaceship you ever need in Kerbal Pro Space Program 0.16. Now, uh, we're in the launch bay, the, the vehicle assembly building, and we are putting on a capsule, a small fuel tank, and now we're looking for an engine as the scientists and engineers go about their business. I like the aerospike. It means that both ends of my spaceship are pointy. Now, uh, this spacecraft in the current version can actually go anywhere and do anything. Well, except for carry three astronauts. But assuming you just want to take one astronaut, this ship will get you anywhere you want to go and many places you perhaps don't want to go. So how, does, how do you do this? Because clearly uh, the engines have all been changed and um, previously people uh, couldn't get, could, certainly couldn't get anywhere, everywhere in the universe with a ship this small. You see uh, the engine is telling you the fuel flow and we're looking out. It is, it is slowly burning down fuel, but I'm running the engine at maybe 15% power. So let's uh, time accelerate up. And uh, you see the fuel is coming down slowly as I pick up altitude. We're getting higher up. I'm taking a very um, shallow trajectory here, as you see. Uh, cut the fuel, the sorry, the thrust down to about 10% normal. And you see I come up into an orbit. It's, um, well, the, the, the peri parakeet is still inside the atmosphere. In fact, the spacecraft is still inside the atmosphere, which is very annoying because I can't time accelerate until I'm out. Uh, but yeah, look, I've uh, more or less made it into orbit with just that. So pretty much that's a record uh, for my uh, previous KSP attempts. But uh, this thing, I'm going to go and take it out even further. Now, the one mission that we've run previously that needs the most Delta V is the direct sun dive. That needs about eight to nine kilometers per second. And what we want to do is, is wait until we're in the right position on the day side of the, the, the planet and then thrust along the vector, thrust along the, the direct orbit vector. Some people call it prograde. Direct is a more correct term, which predates the term prograde, just in case. Uh, basically, it was some engineer saw people using retrograde and decided that the opposite must be prograde when in fact he didn't know that the word direct already described that. Interesting bit of history there if you go back and uh, look at things. So yeah, let's uh, fire up the engine with tiniest thrust possible. And uh, this is the key to the success here. So when uh, Kerbal Space Program 0.16 appeared, all the engines were redone people would uh, had to basically redesign all their spacecraft. And some people had successes with old designs, some people didn't have successes with old designs. But it, then people started noticing that some people were having great successes with designs and other people couldn't get very far with them. You see here, the fuel in this case is running down really slowly. And uh, that therein lies the bug. They, the developers, I think they must store the, the thrust as a value from zero to one and they multiply the fuel consumption by this value, except somewhere along the line they've managed to multiply it by that twice, so they're essentially squaring the value. That means that the fuel consumption um, for one tenth of the thrust, for 10%, is actually one hundredth of what you get. So um, as me, me taking the smallest thrust possible, that looks maybe, what, 3%? I'm getting like a thousand, what, thousand times more fuel efficiency from this. And because of that, I can uh, bring this down. Now, you see, if you look at the clock on the top left, this um, sun dive takes about half an hour of thrusting. So it certainly benefits the patient. Now... This, of course, is nothing like a conventional chemical rocket. A chemical rocket has the energy contained in the fuel in it. It reacts and blasts out the back. But it does actually model the behavior of a rocket which has a power source that is separate from the fuel. Say, for example, you have an onboard nuclear reactor 
And you use the energy from that reactor to accelerate your reaction mass, your inert reaction mass out the back. Well, you know, you know that kinetic energy is proportional to velocity squared and momentum is proportional to velocity. So when you do the math, it turns out that if you want high thrust, you put in more fuel. You see there, uh, by the way, uh, I used about 25 units of fuel and that dropped me into the sun. That changed my velocity by about six and a half kilometers per second. And uh, yeah, if you want high efficiency, you use very low amounts of fuel, which means low thrust, but much higher efficiency. And the, this accident actually completely models that. So yeah, all the ships that you design you know, be wary that they may not exactly perform like this when Kerbal Space Program 0.17 appears. But um, similarly, you know, the similarly, there are ways to circumvent this particular bug. The, the main one being that if you're using liquid fueled engines, you either thrust at 100% or zero because those two data points or whatever correspond to the conventional thrust, the exact thrust you would get without the bug. You can use like, um, solid rocket boosters. Those are unaffected. You can use the EVA packs. Those are a lot of fun. <laughs> and uh, one other nice thing to report is that while we do have this little bug, you know, it's, it's fun to mess around with it, but it appears they have conquered the space crack. And as you see, I'm making a swing around the, pla the, the sun, the Kerbal, and uh, flying at 175,000, uh, 175 kilometers per second. And I'm completely in control of this. Uh, I think the, the scale, what they do is they scale the velocity up based upon the, the, whatever is the, whatever sphere of influence you're in. I found that when I'm flying through near Kerbin at about eight kilometers per second, it started to feel a little squirrely, but it shouldn't affect you ultimately. <laughs> Um, I mean, so, you know, looking at this, this, this spacecraft, you can see it has plenty of excess velocity. You can also take this to the surface of any of the moons. You can land on both the moons. You can come back to Kerbin. You could, you could basically fly back and forth between the moons multiple times. Um, the hard part being that because you're trying to minimize your thrust during landing, you probably want to adjust your approach. Now, your conventional approach for the most efficient landing is to come in really fast and then do 100% thrust at the last minute. But with this bug, you actually want to do the reverse. You want to thrust very slowly and just, you know, come to rest very early on. So doing those grazing trajectories and very slowly burning your velocity down is the way to go if you want to land this thing. Or you can just go back to blowing rockets up because I think that uh, that's much more fun. So yeah, there we are. Have fun with this and fly safe or don't. See you around.